and welcome to the video today. In this video I'm going to be talking about variables and data. So you should be able to identify a categorical and quantitative variable. Those are the different types of variables and data that we have. And we'll describe some graphical displays that we, we have of each of them. And you should be able to locate those variables in a, in a problem. So let's take a look at what we're talking about when we talk about variables and data. So variables, variables are the character is like a, a variable is a characteristic of who we're interested in. So if we're taking a, you know, we, we gather together in a class and we ask the class who prefers the movie Frozen over Toy Story. Um, you know, who we are getting the information from is the class, but the variable would be like the movie preference whether it be Frozen or Toy Story. Data, data on the other, other hand, data are the actual values that we get from those variables that we, we obtain. So um, data would be the actual number of students that chose Frozen and those number of students that chose Toy Story. So that would be our data. Something here that, that many of you probably have heard me say is that data, the word data, Data is a plural. So, you know, in media, oops, in media in the US, in the US, people use this incorrectly. They usually say data is like, like the data is in the CD or something like that. And, um, and, and data is a, data are all the values that we have. So one of the values is called a datum. So the singular of this is datum. The plural, is data. So you'll hear me talk about data as being a plural. So here we have the types of data that we can we can have. Uh, we have really two basic types of data. We have categorical or sometimes called qualitative data and numerical sometimes called quantitative data. Now categorical data is data that has some sort of um, some sort of words. So usually the data that we get are in words. And usually the numerical data, like I said here, is in numbers. So the example that I gave just a second ago where uh, our class was asked whether they like Toy Story or Frozen, the answer that they would give me would be Toy Story or they would give me Frozen. And that answer is in words. So that is considered a categorical variable. So usually it has something to do with a verbal, a verbal label. So like here a vehicle type could be a car, truck, or SUV. Male, female. Yes, no questions are categorical. Sometimes we code them. So we say like a car is a one, truck is a two, SUV is a three. But even when we do this, it's still a categorical variable. And it's very important that, that we know that even though these are numbers, they still represent a category. So these happen to be categories. Now a numerical or a quantitative variable is a variable or, or data, quantitative data come in numbers. We have two types of quantitative data. We have discrete or continuous data. Now discrete data will always, almost always have integer values. And discrete data happen when we're talking about a situation where it doesn't really make sense to, let me get these guys out of the way. It doesn't really make sense to, uh, to put them in a fraction or a percentage or a ratio. Like, you know, annual dental visits. I'm not gonna go for one and a half dental visits. Um, if I'm talking about the number of patients, usually we see that word, number, uh, number of dot, dot, dot for discrete, um, the number of broken eggs. I'm not gonna break half an egg. So uh, this, is, this can be a way that you can tell discrete. Continuous, we can see that there's a decimal, like um, the percentage, the, uh, the height of an individual, right? The height of an individual can be put in terms of decimals. So, so continuous or discrete, those are the two types of quantitative. Let's take a look and see if, if we can identify some variables and the, um, the units of measure in a problem here. So let's take a look at a problem. In, in 2006, Consumer Reports published an annual 
evaluating an article evaluating refrigerators. It listed 41 models giving brand. So right here we're, we're gonna we're gonna come back to this. It's giving brand, cost, size, type, estimated annual energy cost, an overall rating, and the repair history for that brand. And this was given in percentage requiring repairs over the, the past five years. Name the variables and specify whether it's categorical or quantitative. So the variables are the categories, I'm sorry, the characteristics that we are looking for in our who, and our who here is the 41 models of refrigerators that we're evaluating. So what information are we getting? We're getting the brand, the cost, the size, the type, the energy cost, the overall rating, and the repair history. So these are gonna be our variables. So which of these variables are categorical? We've gotta think, which of them will we be given a word? So um, the brand, what kind of, is, is it Whirlpool, is it Frigidaire? So this is a categorical debt variable. Cost would be quantitative, because we can we know how much something cost, $25, $3,000, how much was it? The size was in given in cubic feet. So cubic feet is numerical. So we're gonna say that's size. Then we have, oh, you know what we need to do is we need to go back here and um, write the, the units of each one of these. So let's go ahead and cost is gonna be in terms of dollars. We'll just put a little dollar sign there. And then we have size, which is gonna be in terms of cubic feet. Then we have type, such as a top freezer. That's gonna be categorical. Right, we wanna give a number to the type of freezer it is. The estimated annual energy cost, so that's quantitative. So we'll put, um, we'll just write it down. We gotta write things down here. Estimated annual I can write energy cost and I'm guessing that's going to be in dollars as well what else do we have here what's next the overall rating that's going to be categorical because you know the rating is a category good excellent and the repair history that's going to also be categorical well hold on it says uh, it was given in the percentage requiring repairs over the past five years. So um, that's giving us a percent for each for that brand of of, um, of refrigerator. So that's actually going to be quantitative. So we're going to write down repair history. And that was given in a percent. Okay. So these are the categorical data, these are the categorical variables, and these are the quantitative variables. All right, let's take a look at one last thing. So one thing you want to keep in mind is that categorical data and quantitative data are very different in that even when we describe the data given a, a display, because often we like to display our data so people can see, um, give, get a visual of what the data are doing get an idea of um, some of the the conclusions that they can make um, given the data when we grab when we display data we want to make sure that we use the correct display so uh, categorical data we can use a bar chart or a pie chart and many of you have done a bar chart or a pie chart before and a contingency table which we will talk about a little bit la later on how do we draw contingency tables for categorical data for quantitative data, we're going to use something called a histogram, which I'll go over in a separate video, and we'll look at how do we describe a histogram. Now, a bar chart and histogram look very, very similar, except uh, a histogram is, is, has to do more with quantitative data, and we can, uh, we, we, they, they look a little bit different as well. So I'll go over on the di differences and similarities a little bit different, but it's, it's good to note that a histogram goes with quantitative data and a bar chart goes with categorical. Do not use a bar chart for quantitative data just won't work it's inappropriate use a uh, inappropriate like like you said a bad word too um, 
Dot plots are used for quantitative data. A box plot is used for quantitative data, and we'll go over this. We'll go over all of these actually in another video. And a stem and leaf plot. Now I think a lot of you have seen stem and leaf plots, so I'll show you those later. And box plots. Some of you know them as box and whisker plots. Um, we kind of leave out the whisker a little later, but I'll show you exactly how to graph those. So each of these. Each of these types of displays gives us different information that we can make some conclusions and describe our data. All right, so that's all I have to talk about in terms of variables and data. So thanks for joining me.